Welcome back to episode 109 of the Disorganized Wizard Club podcast. My name is Alex. I'm here as always with Adam Hello. and Cam. Hey. I'm our group of auto bass players. play just about anything and everything we can qualify for. Talk about decks, tournament stories, just about anything. Help you and ourselves get better at magic. Potentially. Potentially. <laughs> Theoretically. <laughs> so speaking of theory, episode 109, there is a strange way of doing arithmetic on the integers, maybe just the natural numbers, called lunar arithmetic, where... The way you add is kind of different. The way you multiply is kind of different. But in this system, 109 is a lunar prime. <laughs> what qualifies lunar? It's just, is this like an astrology thing? No. <laughs> they just called it that because, I don't know, they needed a name for it to be weird. Oh. What? They had some other name for it. Um, is it like a pseudoscience? No, they called it dismal arithmetic at first. I can get on board with okay. that. Sign, sign me <laughs> because up. it was kind of sounded like pessimism i mean because it deals with decimals and dismal kind of sounds like decimal and it was also like weird so they called it that but for some reason i don't know why they changed the name to lunar arithmetic anyway there was a number file video about it recently on youtube that's how i knew about this but you can watch some uh crazy old guy explain why 109 is a lunar prime are the, like it's not the only lunar lunar prime right? no there's there like are multiple infinitely, yeah there are infinitely many but <laughs> is it like but there's still a few and far between just like primes and the integers yeah. normally okay i don't understand why you guys aren't excited about primes <laughs> they're incredibly important to know about <laughs> go on if you know the primes of a number system you know everything about how it multiplies pretty much i you literally can't do arithmetic <laughs> I can, well, I mean, if with actual numbers, no, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's a known fact. I understand the patterns of arithmetic. Uh, but Cam, how is this lunar prime going to help me in my Magic the Gathering adventures? Well, <laughs> Emrakul's imprisoned in a moon. Okay, I'm so listening. if we ever have to fight Emrakul again, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you can explain it. <laughs> maybe maybe uh, Emrakul's power and toughness is now a lunar prime number. Ooh, maybe. That would make sense. Vorthos. Mm -hmm. Watsi, get at us. Let us know. <laughs> Game designer right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A lot of talk about this week. Uh, when it comes to tournaments, nothing to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of ideas and concepts, however. Yeah. Uh, there was a limited GP. Do people care anymore? One by good old Eduardo. I that, like guy, that guy. Great guy. Yeah. Love that guy. His, like, his commentary... Spot on. Yeah. Very he's a good, good dude, too. Yeah. Like, I see him at all, all the time in Montreal. Like, he goes to the, um, what's it called, events. Like, the DreamHack events and stuff I go to yeah. outside of Magic. So, I see him at stuff. I, I met him at GP New York a couple of years ago. Mike introduced me to him. He's a good dude. Yeah. Yeah. It, I think it's super cool that he won, though, after, like, he's been commentating all the big tournaments this season so far. He didn't play in the Pro Tour to yeah. commentate it. Yeah. And just, like, comes in, crushes a GP. Yeah, and he just won with, uh, you know, brick and mortars. Just a couple of dudes. Maybe that, like, doing commentary just sort of powers up your magic game. Like, GP Reed Duke, right? Mm -hmm. He did extremely well in that GP, and he was commentating. So, like, everyone should watch out if Marshall Sucklis registers for a GP. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Actually, it's true, though, that I think in some ways watching games that you're kind of forced to be invested in and pay attention to can really help you. I was playing uh, this weekend. I was playing with a friend. I was over hanging out. and He was playing while I was sitting in the chair behind him. I don't know. I was eating snacks or something. <laughs> but I was watching his game like, no, no, don't do this. Like, they probably have that. And like, well, we shouldn't do this. Like, no, no, no. And he kept playing so badly. I kept being like, <laughs> yeah, stop. And like, I was getting angry. But because I was invested, you know, we yeah. wanted to win. But it was sort of like I was commenting. And when you're commenting on a match, you're forced to think about interactions instead of just being in the moment. In some ways, that distance, I think, can give you perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We still won that game, even though we played like complete <laughs> trash. <laughs> even afterwards, she's shaking his head. He's like, I can't believe how bad I played that game. We had no right winning that. He's like, I just played every turn just drooling on my keyboard. I'm like, I know. I watched it. It was so bad. And it made me think, like... How often does that happen where you just autopilot and you just drool on your keyboard <laughs> or like drool on your deck while you're just putting the stuff out there? You know, Dude, like, I did that the other day. I was playing on Arena and I had a Dawn of Hope and I was playing as like a Boros Mirror, but I had a Dawn of Hope. And I kept like blocking with one lifelink token and then like making two more and like thinking about like how I'm going to distribute. Um, 
mentor counters and like because my guys had lifelink, I just in my head was fine and was winning the race. And then he like attacked me and I like put my two lifelink guys in front of a two-two and then like paused and looked at everything. And I was like, oh, I just, I just take lethal and I just lost. <laughs> <laughs> I just like hadn't looked at my life total in like four turns. It just wasn't a concern to me because you know, I got lifelink guys I've been blocking with a one one. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This one was funny because our opponent had had played a few like kind of weird it was it was ostensibly the is it Drake's mirror, except we kind of rolled him in game one, and then, but he had played some weird cards and not literally a lot of creatures, and I was like, no, no, Dave, I think he's like, is it control? Because mm-hmm. you know that list pops up here and there, mm-hmm. and I was like, no, no, he says it control, and he's like, no, I don't know, like, oh uh, yeah, we're just bringing all these lava coils. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that, you know, like we're kind of whatever. And then he, he has double fire mines research in hand at one point, and our opponent has like five or six lands open, and he just instead of just playing like a four drop. And getting a counter out, he's just like, I'll just slam fire mines. You can never beat it in the mirror. I'm like, yeah, but it's not the mirror. And he just, <laughs> it's too late. He like slams it and the guy yeah. just negates it, right? And still has yeah. three man open. He's like, ah, this next one will get him. I'm like, no, Dave. Because <laughs> <laughs> the next turn, we could have played like an, an Enigma Drake and yeah. a fire mines. And he just slams it, gets gets sinister sabotage. And I'm like, well, there goes our way to win. You know, like, <laughs> then it turns out like it didn't matter. And we just like true Niv Miz it, Niv Miz it, Niv Miz it. After he like beacon bolted the first one, Rousark minus the next one, and then died to the third one <laughs> from like our sideboard. What, so we you just, played perfectly. What are you talking about? He just played so, so incredibly badly. And it just didn't matter. And we just rolled him because like Niv Miz it in the mirror is just yeah something else. But yeah, it was just sort of this autopilot. And I, I was back sort of watching over his shoulder being like no man I really like I think like you need to pause and think this through you know what I mean and he mm-hmm. just jammed and it was sort of like yeah I bet I do that all the time and don't even realize it because you're just in the moment you're like oh yeah this is for sure like this resolves like, no. you know in the mirror normally fire mines research does resolve and then you win the mirror because it kills Niv Mizzet it you know what I mean yeah does so much the card's insane in the mirror I mean it's good against control too but yeah it was funny like so that kind of perspective, you know, probably explains why Eduardo yeah. out there just <laughs> tearing it up. Yeah, and like he, I can't remember if his sealed pool was Golgari, but his definitely his first his both his draft decks on day two plus his top eight draft deck were. Yeah, and he just smashed people. I, think I thought his, Golgari was unplayable. I think his law. Well, yeah, it was at first. I think until you realize how to play it, which is like you just trade. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, the 5-mana 4-4 four, four that gains life, stuff like that. Like, that guy's really good. Yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden, your 4-mana, what's the, however you pronounce the Lurcher card, is just like Rhizome a, Lurcher. An 8-8 eight, eight for 4-mana. Yeah. Mana. That's how you win with those decks. Like, yeah. you play a bunch of Dissidents and other stuff that just trade early, and then you just play a Rhizome Lurcher. It's like a 7-7 seven, seven in the game. It's, yeah, I guess this kind of... But you need those uncommons. Yeah. But the thing is, because people don't favor green-black, you can get them. Yeah, yeah. a point you made earlier in one of our earlier episodes is that you thought green black was very weak because of its lack of enablers and sort of the common rebuttal that we got from people when we explained this was yeah but creatures die normally and at the time i guess we were thinking that they don't die fast enough but if you just play to trade aggressively then it as eduardo proved yeah it is sufficient if you're filling your deck with like hired poisoners and other you know grizzly bears that are just gonna block and trade then yeah it seems fine yeah, you just gotta get. You gotta make sure you get those bread and butter cards, though. It's not mm. like he's like his deck. Maybe like looks bad, but it's actually not. It's like exactly what Green Black wants to be doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just a pile of trash. Yeah, and it has debt. Yeah, exactly. it's just on theme. Yeah, because yeah, get it in the graveyard. Get it in the bin. Yeah, exactly. Trash. They, they live that's in the what, sewers. That's what the Golgari Guild is all Plus, about. Plus, yeah, guys. double dead weight. That card's mythic. Jeez, Mm-mm. that card just mythic removal. It's so busted. Yeah, yeah. Looking at it, let me pull up his top eight list right here. Uh, Child of Night main deck. Yikes! I actually what? don't mind that card. Gains life and trades. Yeah, it does. Moonmark Painter is that card even good? No, I have yeah, not cast a single not. one of these. That one's the worst card in his deck, probably. Yeah, he has an Assassin's Trophy though. Best. There we go. That's why he won. Uh, okay. Best removal spell ever printed, guys. <laughs> We've got an Iron Shell Beetle. Having an Assure Assemble is really good. That card is nuts. Yeah, that card's obscene. Mm-hmm. I got yeah. one, got one right here. Indrik's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, I I think actually Pell Collector is very good and limited. Yeah? Yeah, you just trade, like, use the Centipede to, like, keep buffing it. Like, I don't know. It, it gets, gets huge. buffs it twice. Yeah. yeah, it gets pumped by pretty much every two drop. So, like, 
doesn't take much more than that to make it a 3 3. And you want to trade. 3 3 is big in this format. Because he's playing like Crawl Foragers, which is secretly like not that bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Centipede is really good. He has a bunch of flyers too. Pumps it like three times. Yeah, that's what I mean. He has a bunch of flyers too. Like the bats swarm. I don't know. It's fine. It's not busted, but like that's usually not the case. Usually the best. Limited decks are just sort of bread and butter decks with an okay curve and some removal. Mm-hmm. They just got to draw okay, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of interesting what's in his sideboard that he didn't play. He has a circuitous route. Like, he's splashing white and he has a circuitous route, but he chose not to play it. Not playing a Severed Strands. Uh, uh, Car- Severed Strands. Car's not a creature. That's fair. Yeah, Severed Strands, yeah, not ideal. Also, I get not playing the circuitous route because he doesn't need to draw the Celestia Guild Gates he has. Because you can, he can cast the front side of a sure assemble, and yeah. the front side alone is really, really powerful. That makes sense. Yeah, like he doesn't need the three two twos. Late game actually unlimited that isn't that good. A lot of times, like the pump, like the trick to keep your guys indestructible is like, or your one guy indestructible is good enough. It's actually quite strong. This is a really versatile trick. Mm-hmm. Man, two Mulder Hulk in his sideboard though. He hate to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not surprised though. I would never play that card. Man, I love that card. I love that card too, but oh, speaking of that card, do you see, you see how I've been playing it in, on Arena and Standard? Uh, no. Oh, man. I'm playing a lot of it. It's a so lot good. of Mulder Hulk. So good. With, uh, man, Midnight Reaper, four Midnight Reaper in my deck. Yeah. And three Gruesome Menagerie. So I've like, com- I've like combined the, yeah. you know, like I have like Wild Growth Walkers and everything, but it's also a Mulder Hulk deck. Yeah. Just have no interaction. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs it? But it like their matches doesn't matter. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you lose to Drakes. Sure. Unless you can race them, which happens. Like you have Plague Crafters actually, so that does help a lot. Like if you're that on the card's very good against Drakes. If you're on the play versus them, it's like you're only gonna lose to a really good Phoenix draw, actually. You like you'll beat any slow draw from them. Because mm-hmm. like you'll also just play a turn four Mulder Hulk and pound them. Yeah. So it's actually not that bad. Uh the control matchup seems really good. Like, I don't know. The green black matchup was okay. Midnight Reaper is a good card. That's why. Like, yeah. <laughs> like he, there would be games when I was playing it where me and my buddy were playing. He was like, there's no way. And I was like, no, watch. Like, we'll just play this Midnight Reaper. Like, he tapped out. We have a bunch of idiots. He's like, he's getting yeah. Clary on us. I'm like, right. Yeah, I'll draw five cards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's fine. <laughs> drive five, take five. And then I'm like, gruesome menagerie. Get like, you know, a stitch of supplier. Yeah. Some idiot too. Draw like a branch walker and another, and Midnight Reaper back. And then just, you know. Yeah. Then just after that, start just slamming Molder Hulks every turn for the rest of the game. It's pretty good. Sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Played a lot of, uh, what's it called, too? Adrian Sullivan's list. Oh, the Jess Cat list? Holy. Is it bad? <laughs> no, it's so good. It's so good. Dude, we absolutely okay. We were like, we started playing, I think, when did you come out? Like 10 p.m. or something? Uh, I had been home for a while, but I think oh, yeah, yeah. he showed up at like 10 or 11. Yeah. So we probably started playing that deck at like, I don't know. Yeah, I was feeling kind of sick and like had something to do in the morning. So mm-hmm. like. They asked if I wanted to, like, play games with them. I said, no. They showed up at, like, 11 p.m. I went to sleep at, like, midnight. Woke up, <laughs> or, like, to go about my day at, like, 9 in the morning, 10 in the morning. And then, yeah, like, we were our, still our buddy <laughs> left at, like, 11 p.m. 11 a.m. the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, do. we were, like, because probably at, like, 2 in the morning, we were, like, all right, let's play this deck. And then we smashed, and then we are like, uh, let's do another, like, league and see how it mm. goes. Smash. And we're, like, well, let's just play this thing until we lose. <laughs> and then we never lost. And then we were like, uh, okay, let's do a draft. <laughs> and then we were like, <laughs> we, we like X out our draft and we we're like, ah, yeah. ah, we're done here. <laughs> it's like, get out of my house. <laughs> Go home. I'm so tired. But uh, we, there was a game we, we almost lost. It was, uh, if this was the person on the other end, they would have won blowout of the week. Mm-hmm. They, uh, it was a really grindy match and it was like, the is it Drake's deck? And they boarded into a bunch of the slower stuff, right? Like Ralz Eric and Beacon Bolts. Try and stop our Niv Mizzet, and they were grinding us down. And we were like, oh, let's just like. <clears throat> they had a Ralz Eric at one, or no, it was at two. And we're mm-hmm. like, okay, let's just play this Niv Mizzet now. And we, we know he has a beacon bolt in the graveyard, but that's going to cost, he only has like six mana. Yeah. It's going to cost half his mana. We'll draw a card, ping Ralz Eric down to one. And then, like, hopefully we draw something that we can cast, or like, or we can cast a card off like a treasure or something, right? We'll see yeah. what happens. And like, yeah. he casts like a bunch of spells. We're like fighting our stuff. And like, we have one treasure left open and we like draw off the beacon bolt finally. And it's just dive down. And we're like, 
Oh, Andrew nice. Sullivan's genius. <laughs> We're just gasping. The guy just concedes the match. It was game one. <laughs> <laughs> it was like grind, drawing all these cards. We're like killing his Riles Eric, but he's going to bring back like a couple Phoenixes. We're like, oh yeah. man, this is so tight. We have like a Teferi yeah. that's going to die to a Phoenix if it comes back. We're like, oh, like. How do we like? Uh, and then we just draw a dive down. And we're like, oh my god, like get wrecked. And we just kept getting people, man. People would like oh. go to Ixalan's binding. You're like, Nim is it? You're like, nope. <laughs> 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 the only matches we would have lost that like we got raffle stomp game one was mono blue because yeah, okay, that, that deck. deck sucks. Can't beat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that deck, man. I just and then we won because he kept the one lander and bricked. And then in game two, kept the one lander. Played a Miskalo Carold. We were on the draw. We we're like, Ugh. we like played a tap land. And then he, we're like, we have a Clarion. Then he plays a Curious Obsession on it, misses mm-hmm. his second land again. And we're like, well, we're probably still going to lose, actually. We like, <laughs> we don't have an answer. And then we top deck a seal away, <laughs> like get his guy. And then he yeah. rage concedes. But yeah. we were like, would have lost actually that matchup. And then we played it again. And like the same thing happened like nine matches later where we played against Mono Blue. And he just got like, Rolled this game one and then just got foolishly unlucky. We beat him. That's like the only way. You've... And everyone's like, how do they beat Niv Miz? It's like, Niv doesn't matter. You're dead by the time you can cast Niv Miz. It. Like, yeah. You're so dead. I don't think people, like, they just tap it with Trickster. I've seen people or... in that chat that, yeah, they're like, oh, look, yeah, they can never beat Niv Miz. Like, they're, you know, like, you have lots of ways to, like, stop Mono Blue. It's like, hell no, you don't. Have you played that matchup? Hell no. They just, cl- like, Clarion doesn't do anything. Just gets countered. And, like, if it doesn't, and, like, they're just all in with, like, two curious obsessions on one guy. They just dive down. Yeah. And it survives the clear. And then you lose on the spot. Yeah. And they play four dive down and like four retort main. Like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. Jeez. Love that deck. <laughs> it's bad. Blue but it's unbeatable. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's unbeatable. I don't know how. And deck costs nothing. Actually, it's more expensive now. I think Siren Storm Tamer is like five bucks a piece. Yeah, they went up. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Dude, they're like five bucks a Siren piece. Siren Storm Tamer. Yeah, yeah. uncommon. Five bucks. Like no one wanted Canadian. to open Ixalan or whatever set yeah, it was yeah. in. Yeah, because it's a garbage set. And dude, everyone right? threw them away. Yeah, because it's good. Job. I'm pretty sure I still have some. Yeah, me yeah, too. I kept four. What, I just uh, set them aside, but. What else is in that deck that went up? Oh my god! There's another uh, like Charter Course is I think kind of pricey right now too. Okay, it was like two bucks, which is expensive. Yeah. Right? But yeah, but I mean, still, a deck's pretty cheap. And if I don't know, like as much as people don't respect it, it wins a lot. It's really powerful, and because it's so cheap, you know. And if you didn't take advantage of their Black Friday sale this weekend, <laughs> and you want to order the Mono Blue deck, you can do so at WizardTower.com. Proud sponsors of this podcast. Great store, great people. Love to see it. <laughs> yeah, Would Mono recommend. WizardTower.com. <laughs> yeah, free okay. shipping on singles in Canada. Mm-hmm. You can also get your expensive decks there too if you'd like. Yeah, yeah they got man. a lot of stuff. Dude, All your single needs. Oh, So, side story. I was uh, sitting at, down here at my computer just looking at different cards on this Black Friday sale and I just, I'm like, no, maybe I should buy some modern cards. I'm like, maybe I want to play something other than Tron and Modern. So I put I put all nope. the cards I was missing from Hard and Scales Affinity into my cart, and it was like a thousand dollars. I'm like, ah, nope, <laughs> take those out. Put all the cards I was missing from Band Spirits into the cart, and it was like just under a thousand dollars. And I'm like, guys, I don't want to play modern. <laughs> Stuck them all out and closed. I'm like, God, I, I don't know why what I was thinking, man. Just think though, they would have cost you like fourteen hundred dollars. Yeah, I know, man. Yeah, modern. Oof. Yeah, there's a modern Baltimore Open is modern this weekend. Yeah. Then the Invitational weekend after that, eh? Yeah, we're looking forward to the Invitational weekend. It's always really fun. It's a good tournament to watch. I like watching that tournament. Yeah, it's really well done. The Don't, commentary is excellent. Yeah, they always bring out uh, Patrick. Yeah, et cetera, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. Bring out the big guns. <laughs> yeah, best in the game. <laughs> yeah, it's great, and the format's cool, and it's well done, and the production's always good. Like, yeah, it's just an excellent tournament. Mm-hmm. Really looking forward to it. Yeah. Man, you know what we should do? We should write to SCG with. This proposition, like, I want to propose a bingo square for their invitational coverage, which is someone has the same four of in their modern and standard deck. I think that's a good bang, bingo square. Yeah, that is a good one. We no, should post a bingo no, square. No, also is next weekend, though. It's a PPTQ at the Wizards Tower. Oh, yeah. Another plug that as well. So if you want to get yourself qualified for an RPTQ, be sure to... Uh, yeah. December 8th at the Wizards play. Tower here standard? in Ottawa. I think so. Do I got Tempest Jins? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that deck nuts. Yeah. And no one, like, no one will play it. It's so good. Yeah. Man. Speaking of modern, though, 
Yeah. I don't know what I'd play. Maybe I'd play a Snapcaster deck, but I'm a little worried about <laughs> <laughs> its position in okay. the format right now. <laughs> so, well, you see, your problem is emotional leakage. And have you heard of flex tape? <laughs> <laughs> Like, Flex tape. <laughs> yeah, dude, it seals everything. What the fuck? <laughs> you got a leak? Flex tape will fix it. Yeah. New sponsor of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you got a hole in your game? <laughs> got you some flex tape. There we go. Yeah, to demonstrate the power of flex tape, we saw this Snapcaster in half. <laughs> Judges now think it's still tournament legal. <laughs> no, so uh, Cam was unfortunate enough to be browsing Reddit the other day on the Spike subreddit. I, so I wasn't on the Spike subreddit. Liar. But I'm subscribed to the Spike subreddit. Oh, so that even worse. So no, it's better because I don't have to read all of Spikes. But when something really crazy happens, it shows up on my all feed. So I only okay. see like the cream of the crop. So what? What, what pops up into your all feed? So this one was labeled square brackets discussion, square brackets emotional leakage, improving your game. What are your best strategies for hiding that you just drew your graveyard spell? And then the thread is about, if I draw a Snapcaster and need to look at my graveyard, how do I hide the fact from my opponent that I drew a Snapcaster? And this kind of... Uh, yeah, and so what we're talking about today is the wrong, like, wrong questions. Like, a question that you ask that you shouldn't be asking. This ain't it. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and th- this, was, this kind of made us all laugh when we, uh, we read this because I think all of us just kind of jumped to, like, why, why don't you just already know? If you have Snapcaster in your deck, yeah, like why? And also, that's a you know Pete said in that chat right away too. He's like, well, the only answer to that question is, why are you planning what happens if you draw a Snapcaster in your Snapcaster deck? Yeah, why are you yeah. shocked? Why do you need to think about it once it's in your hand? Like, oh my god, I didn't know this was in the deck. <laughs> oh, look, is that yeah. nuts? Have you guys seen this card? <laughs> and we, this we thread is just full of like the most well ridiculous to us, but I think like earnest or honest opinions of, like, how you're supposed to hide this when you, you're just asking the wrong question. Yeah, like, every answer is bad, and they're cheesy and bad. But even if people are in earnest, it's not their fault because yeah. you can only answer a bad question with a bad answer, mm-hmm. right? Because, yeah, what are you supposed to do? Oh, like, fake bluff it, or, like, <laughs> yeah. they're all the responses. Some are of just, them, yeah, they're, like, ask to see your opponent's graveyard first and then look at yours to see that... They're you're all just, just you're just looking at graveyards. Yeah. Just yeah. ask a question out loud. Oh, how uh, how many bolts have I cast this game? And maybe yeah. they, they won't think that you just drew your Snapcaster Mage. You're just thinking about if you can draw another bolt. Like it's ridiculous. They're all just ludicrous, and th- like that's what you get when you ask a ludicrous question. Mm-hmm. And so, but people take it seriously, and I think that's a mistake. Is you know, I think people do this quite often in Magic. Right? They ask the wrong question. Yep. And you know, talk a bit about that, I guess. Yeah, we've got a bunch. This was kind of a pretty good example because we've all done it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you all embarrassingly or sheepishly try and downplay, you mm-hmm. know. They're like, I knew you had it. You're like, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know shit. <laughs> you try and act cool like you bluffed them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you try and act like blow it off like it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> like, dude, you literally looked right at your graveyard. You're like, yeah, but then I looked at yours. <laughs> you I did it know. so perfectly. Maybe yeah. it's a dire fleet, Daredevil. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so, yeah, we have a couple examples of questions that aren't the question you should be asking. And we have examples of questions that you probably should be considering in that situation instead. So yeah. we already sort of mentioned it. But in this case, it's the question shouldn't be, how do I hide that I drew a Snapcaster? It should be the turns prior you should have been asking yourself, what are my options if I draw a Snapcaster? How can I play so that I can maximize what a Snapcaster could do when I draw one? And then you will have already have thought about this. Yeah. I mean, if anything, if you're worried about your opponent, then it can be... You know, well, okay, if I keep looking at my graveyard throughout the game, are they going to be aware that, like, I should be also playing around Snapcaster? Like, these are real questions. And, like, how does that affect the game state and bluffing? But, like, this sort of just, like, level one, like, maybe I'll get them. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. And, like, I, yeah, I think this is a common mistake. It's it's hard to figure out what... It's hard to pinpoint what exactly it is that makes these questions bad. Mm-hmm. It's... But it's just people are asking... Questions that I think that if you, all your responses are terrible, <laughs> yeah, then and you can't think of a solution, 
then give yourself some credit and say, well, I'm smart enough to have probably thought a solution. So maybe the question is just bad. Yeah. And like, they're not, so they're bad questions, but they're not necessarily like, they're not useless questions. There are some of these answers that some people will employ and think are useful and they probably are to some minor degree useful, but they're questions that kind of when asked betray that the person who asked them isn't playing as well as they could. It's literally sort of like, there are obvious mistakes that you see in magic. Someone chump makes a bad attack and gets blown out or someone miss sequences, but you don't see the mistakes where someone does something fine for the wrong reason. And yeah. these are questions that sort of illuminate the fact that someone did something and by happenstance, it was okay because they were thinking about the completely wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, it worked out. So, I mean, yeah, it exactly. Couldn't have been wrong. Yeah. Scoreboard. <laughs> that's where, like, our meme of that always comes from, right? That's where yeah. that came from. Yeah. Like, yeah. the old, like, meme we have of, like, well, scoreboard. Yeah. I won. Yeah. So, it doesn't matter what I think, what I was thinking or why I did what I did because yeah. it worked. We do yeah. that all the time. And we yeah. know, like, that's why is because, like, you can still play like a complete donkey. And, like, yeah. You know, still yeah. win. Exactly. It's a game of variance. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I mean, tying this all back to the Snapcaster example, if you are in game and you have to, you're asking yourself, oh, damn, I just drew the Snapcaster. How do I hide it from my opponent that I drew it? Like, you already messed up, man. Yeah. It's too late. Exactly. Like, you should actually at that point, you know what the only actual answer, if we're going to also provide an answer in earnest, you just got to YOLO cast that snap and hope like you remember something in your graveyard. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you got to be like, yeah, don't uh, look. Yeah, like, just don't cast look it and, and then, then look. Yeah, exactly. And then be like, <laughs> All right, what do we got here? <laughs> like, that's the actual only response. Or right? the other question should be, how am I going to tell this story to my friends without looking like a bad player for not having thought about this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you definitely just got to be like, ah, oh, yeah, I forgot I had Snapcasters, so I just, like, slammed it and was like, well, hopefully it's good yeah. enough. And you just got to hope I already cast a cryptic so that I can bounce my snap, and then we all know I have one. <laughs> so later, so like counter that bounce my snap caster, and then you're like, okay, we'll figure the rest out later. Like that's that's what you hope. Yeah. Like the best case scenario is like you have enough mana to snap your cryptic back to your hand, so everyone is on the equal playing field now. <laughs> well said, man. Yeah, that's well said. Saying. <laughs> man, I'm learning now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but like you'll hear this in in it's not just modern or like I drew a snap with these really specific cases. You hear these kind of questions in modern, like what bombs do I want to open in draft? What are the best rares I should be looking to open in draft? It's like yeah, that that is not the right question, friend. No. Yeah, that's there's a lot of it's it's easy it's an easy way out to think about limited in terms of how lucky were you at opening? Yeah, mm -hmm. I got a sick deck. Check out my sick sealed deck. Yeah. And people will say they don't like sealed. Like, I don't like sealed because someone opened bombs and I can't win. Or I don't open bombs. And then, you know, it's, just, it's boring. And, like, we we have gone through thoroughly debunking this on this podcast many for times. years. <laughs> We've for actual years. Yeah. Multiple times we have gone through the 9-0 sealed list and been like, oh, look. Just consistent, you know, no real bombs. Like, a couple, one or two playable rares. Nothing crazy. Just consistent, powerful archetype you know mm -hmm. yeah so what was it that the people who did well with those medium pools were probably thinking what was the correct question to ask here well i mean <laughs> <laughs> well let me tell you cam no one's so. answering my leading question <laughs> i'll answer well th thanks for asking cam you see <laughs> uh yeah like doing well with these medium pools is not being concerned if you did or didn't open a good rare but it's looking at your pool and seeing how can I beat the rares that other people opened? Yeah. yeah. How do I how do I build this pool efficiently? What are what is yeah. it capable of doing? Like what yeah. is the most powerful build of this pool? Rares don't mean shit. True. Pardon my pardon my <laughs> French. <laughs> but you know, they don't. And in in draft, it's even more noticeable. People will get upset at, oh, you know, whatever. Like, what are you associating the monetary value of your win, you know, with the cards you open in draft with your win percentage? Because I can already tell you that's a problem. Mm-hmm. You know, so maybe you should be thinking about like what archetypes, what you want to send, what you're hoping to get. Like these are questions you should be asking. And you know, what bombs do I want to open? I mean, what are the odds you open them? Like that's so ridiculous. Yeah. Mm. But you hear people saying like, "Oh, what are the best cards in the format? Like, what should I be looking to open?" Like, well, <laughs> you should be asking like, "What are the archetypes? What's going on? What yeah. are good sideboard cards to beat bombs?" Like in yeah, Dominaria, like just so what, 
sideboard cards could I draft in each color that beat a Lyra, that beat a Yawgmoth's File Offering, that beat a what? I mean, not much beats Yawgmoth's File Offering, but oh yeah, cards demanded. <laughs> but yeah, you, there's like other attainable things that you can try and plan for to beat these like yeah. random yeah. fluctuations out of your opponents. Realistic questions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the most important thing to be worrying about is what synergies does my deck have? How does my deck play together? What strategy am I putting forth to win games? Not uh, do what powerful bomber am I looking to draft? Mm-hmm. Like, and kind of kind of similar, kind of on a similar vein to oh, someone opened a bomb and someone didn't, and just thinking about this, like worrying about disparity in potential deck power is another pe- another point that a lot of people worry about, especially in older formats, is matchup percentages. Like, my opponent has something that's very powerful against me, or like this is a bad matchup, that's a good matchup. Or they ask, you know, what's the percentage of this matchup rather than, and like, they see these numbers as just, well, that's just how that matchup is. When they lose a bad matchup, oh, you know, could, nothing I could have done. Yeah, you'll often see, God bless him, my good, our good friend and social media manager, Benson, <laughs> will often just talk about decks and what happened, what happened in the matchup as a percentage-based thing. Yeah. Like he'll say, well, it's a good matchup for me. Like it's a 70-30 matchup. I was, you know, it's so stupid that I lost it. And I think that thinking about decks, you know, and asking about the percentages and thinking they matter is a really big mistake and sort of prevents people from growing. Yeah, and I think it's just a really bad mindset to get yourself into, especially when we're talking about magic, a game of variance, where your first matchup percentage could literally just mean zero across any amount of games. Yeah. So... Yeah, exactly. And, you know, even the ones that are really extreme, like back when, you know, you get to play against Counter's Company with a card, <laughs> right? You're just laughing at them. Play, yeah, back in the good old days when Green Red Tron versus Jund. Yeah, you know? you're just laughing at them, but they can still win. I've lost I've lost to Jund. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. And so the question isn't, oh, what's this, you know, win percentage for me? Like, you know, that that is not how you should be looking at it. It should be more along the lines of, well, why is this a bad matchup? Mm-hmm. And what can I do to mitigate it? Yeah, what cards matter from them? What cards are hard for me to beat? You know, how how do I go about crafting my game plan to play around these cards? What strategy do I have to take to get around? You know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. And the ones that matter. An example yeah. of this, we probably might have even talked about this process in a past episode when uh, Adam and I were building and playing the white black to- white black tokens in Last Standard. We recognized that we were just dying to blue-black, blue-black mid-range was a hard matchup for us. And at first, it was just generally a hard matchup, but then we realized that it's just Scarab God that makes it hard. We can deal with everything (laughs) except Scarab God. And it was still kind of a tough matchup, but once we realized why it was a bad matchup, then we could work on saving all of our resources to stop just Scarab God. Yeah. And then it got better. Yeah, that was fine. Then the matchup was still hard, but if you played it in a way that gave you a higher percentage versus them. Right. You know, as long as you played it correctly, because we figured out what it was. We're, we didn't just say, oh, this is a bad matchup. We were like, why is this a bad matchup? And is there something we can do without even changing the cards in our deck? Literally just changing how we approach the matchup. We ended up changing all card in the deck. We added all scavenger grounds, and that made things obviously also much better. Yeah. But it obviously, it's a card. It didn't change. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not going to change everything. Yeah. But we changed our approach to the matchup. And our under, in our sort of thinking about what what was happening, and that changed out our win, our win percentage, right? So, mm-hmm. yeah, this is a something that I think people, yeah, that's a really good example. That even the language don't. is kind of like maybe not super helpful of thinking it as like a good or bad matchup. I would propose you instead think of it as hard or easy matchups. Yeah, like so you can still achieve things that are difficult. You just need to pay more attention. You need to put more care into playing those matchups and you need to understand why it's hard Mm -hmm. and in the easy matchups well understand why it's easy understand which parts and which powers of your deck you can lean on that your opponent has a hard time dealing with yeah and it's not understanding this like just thinking in general oh it's a good matchup and then squandering your resources that are the ones that are important the ones that make it good because you don't know that that's what like those are the part of the deck that make it a good matchup or how you lose those matchups. Yeah. yeah. And you you hear this, you know, the same amount of times you hear throughout a tournament, like, oh, man, it was such a bad matchup for me. I can never win. You also hear it from the other end, like, oh, man, I can't believe I lost that matchup. It was so good for me. Yeah, especially when matchups are new. Like, when a deck is new, this mm-hmm. happens a lot of time in Standard. Two people playing the same deck will wildly disagree on 
whether a matchup is good or bad. Yeah. Yep. Because one person has found some way to play it that makes it easy and the other person hasn't. Yeah. Yeah. It happens all the time where people are like, ah, oh, I think this deck's bad. And I'm like, really? Because I keep winning and I think it's great. And then you watch video differences of how I'm playing and they're playing and maybe I'm playing it terribly. You know what I mean? If yeah. I can't win with it, but they're playing it completely differently, right? So this happens all the time. I think way more than people realize. And I think actually this is something in Magic that people are just not seeing because you never hear this come up. Like, you know, you see deck guides, but you don't see like how to play the deck and how to like yeah. leverage its strengths, right? It's mostly just like sideboarding guides. These are why I chose these cards. This matchup's good. You yeah. know, no one ever says why. No yeah. one ever asks the right question or like it gives the right reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Because... I don't know, why, why is it that I was winning with white-black tokens and no one else could, right? Yeah. Why is it that... I mean, you're playing the Chain Whirler meta. I don't know how you're doing it either. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of. <laughs> but there's lots. There's other decks where I've played aggro decks that Phil likes, and I'm like, I, I don't know, like, I can't win with this thing. Like, I don't know what's going on, right? And he's like, yeah. oh, you're just playing it wrong. Or uh, one of the other good examples was um, Hemsley. When he first started playing Hardened Scales, he tried to tell multiple people how good it was. And they were all like, no, this deck's terrible. I tried to play it. I went like 05 in a league. Like, it just did nothing. And yeah. he was like, what? Like, I don't understand. Like, I can't stop winning. And he was getting mad at people. And then finally he was like, all right, like, let me see how you're playing. Like, get on stream with me so I can watch you. And then he'd be like, oh, you're just doing everything wrong. Yeah. You know, like, you're just sequencing everything poorly. And, and it doesn't seem like it. It seems like you're playing it right. So I think when you're losing a lot with decks that other people are like, no, this deck's good, maybe you should, you know, ask. Take what. a good hard look in the mirror and <laughs> <laughs> realize well, that maybe the problem isn't the deck. Yeah, or even, I mean, it can even be a deck that people generally think is bad, but one person is able to win with. I mean, look at Miracles for the longest time. It was like, not played, and Joe Lissette just played it. Mm -hmm. You know, and everyone's like, eh, I don't know, it's like me, me, and Goofy. And then all of a yeah. sudden, it's the best. It's nothing, real, nothing changed. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it got banned. Yeah. So what was going on? people learned how to play it finally. Because that deck is very difficult to play. But once you know, you're like, wait, this is unbeatable. <laughs> <laughs> it's just another example of the classic, you know, human inability to interpret statistics correctly or in a meaningful way. Like, those percentage statistics are about that matchup and how the people approach that matchup. Your win percentage is about both the deck and how you pilot the deck, not just the deck in abstract and other people would have the same win percentage so well we can't talk about stats on this this uh podcast man i did so bad in stats in university i'm not qualified to talk about it i have not taken many stats courses <laughs> it's impossible not even math <laughs> i that's why i don't take those courses <laughs> <laughs> man runs in the family though it's not my fault <laughs> Isn't that a statistical thing? You are more likely to be bad at stats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my grandfather was illiterate, and so am I. No, I'm just <laughs> Reading is impossible for the whole human race, so what chance do I have? How <laughs> could I bother trying to learn? I just get Stelly to tell me what these cards do, and I match the picture to what he said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So another, another question uh, we get asked a lot, or like you just kind of hear all the time is, you know, what deck should I play for this weekend? Yeah, and I think this is... And the one with the best matchups. <laughs> the one with the highest win percentage. Yeah. <laughs> the highest metagame percentage. Easy, easy. Go to MTG Goldfish, look at the deck. <laughs> yeah, clean. <laughs> Pick one, done. Just copy 75 and off to the races. Yeah, yeah, there you go. But that's not the question you should be asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What question should I be asking? I think you should probably be asking, what's the meta going to look like this weekend? Mm-hmm. What for this uh, upcoming PPTQ at Wizard Tower that yeah. you're going to play in, what do you think other people will show up with? Mm -hmm. What are the broad range of decks within this kind of diverse metagame in standard do you expect to see? And does it matter and how much does it affect your decisions? And does it affect your decisions or are you just going to play what you have and what you like? Yeah. And if so, like, what is your sideboarding plan? Like, that's, you know what I mean? These are the questions you should ask. Like, what, what are you going to play? Unless, like, you're literally just going to say, I'm borrowing a deck from a friend. Okay, then. But even then, you should still be thinking of, yeah, what do I expect to be in the room? What's so the board I, and why? Yeah, so I know how to think, like, how to sideboard? How to sideboard, <laughs> how, so I can start considering how this deck will play those matchups. Like, it's much more, like, if you know what, um, meta you're walking into 
you'll probably do better with a random choice of three decks than knowing one deck very well, but no idea what you're going to be playing against. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just understanding how you're supposed to play the matchup, right? You know, it's like, yeah, you could still play green-white tokens this weekend. You don't have to not play that deck, but how are how are you going to play that deck? Not what deck are you going to play? How are you going to approach playing that deck? You're going to play go bigger, you know, go wide, right? Mm-hmm. How do you yeah. want to use your cards? Like, when do you cast March of the Multitudes? When do you go all in? Like, all these are actually the questions. Like, it doesn't really matter, like, what deck you play right now in standard. I think this is why it's a good example. Probably modern too right now. You know what I mean? For the most part. Like, you can kind of play whatever you want. Mm-hmm. It's not like it was six months ago. It's like, what deck you can play this weekend? Lol. <laughs> right? He's like, just play red, black, or get yeah. out of my game. Like, yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah, exactly. You can play kind of whatever you want. Mm-hmm. But how you play it is the real question, right? Yeah. How are you playing this matchup? Exactly. Yeah. And this is also part of the win percentage thing, right? Because these yeah. are all kind of questions related to, I think, a fundamental a fundamental misunderstanding of getting better. It goes back to well. like our anecdotes of drooling on the keyboard. <laughs> the reason that <laughs> Big a lot fan of, of that. <laughs> the reason I think this question is overlooked by a lot of people is because the things you have to change to modify like these parts of how you approach a matchup are exactly the parts that people drool over. The parts that feel so obvious that why would I ever do anything different? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, obviously, I attack here. Obviously, I do this here. Obviously, I, I have mana this. for this. So, I, like, they're the parts that people don't even consider because they just feel so. Yeah, it's like you're optimal. saying with the traverse thing that, yeah. you know, Ron cast and then 10 turns later gets punished on the yeah. pre show, right? Mm-hmm. Just kind of these autopilot plays. You just kind of yeah. get. Yeah, the, way, way. Of doing that. Way back when we talked about sequencing, right? We talked mm-hmm. about the way in which even early land drops, people will mess up. You know, this was way back because I think there was some. Um, cons right like there was like jace baby jace and like yeah all when these you had fetch, like try lands old and mardu lands. green baby back yeah. again <laughs> <laughs> never ends dude the meme stays alive love um it. yeah you'll love to see it yeah um rest in peace see you i played so many modern green mirrors <laughs> that's <laughs> oh, the time yeah. when we still met like weekly to test but yeah. of our testing group like four of the five people were on martyr green so all we played were mirrors but then every tournament we went to was a bunch of mirrors so it worked out <laughs> <laughs> yeah but what was, that, what was I bringing? Oh, yeah. Secret, autopilot, secret mana. Yeah. And like yeah. people would autopilot and then just lose because mm-hmm. they'd be a turn behind because of it and be like, oh, shit. Yeah, and like, one play, one land comes in tapped when it needed to be untapped. And, and then, then they get done. tempoed out. <laughs> <Game. laughs> Art punked out of the game. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Tempo. <laughs> Maybe this is where the, or part of where the like stereotype of the crazy eccentric genius scientist comes from because he's like, they do all these like wacky things. It's like defying all the like common knowledge, but that mm-hmm. leads them to their like one, you know, invention of the DeLorean or whatever. <laughs> Cause they're challenging all the like autopilot yeah, yeah. decisions that people make in their life. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I mean the major, actually that reminds me the major question, the biggest faulty question people ask is what is tempo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, <laughs> I, who well, knows we can all agree that asking that question is bad tempo. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You're just wasting time over here. Yeah. Well, is that even yeah. what it means? I don't know. Trading resources so you go by faster, I think. I don't know. I don't know. For like 50,000 different. I thought it was wasting yeah. resources to, to go fast. Make it inefficient for your opponent to spend resources. Yeah, that's probably the generic best one. Yeah. yeah. Art punk. Yeah. Tempo. Just put art in front of anything. Delver. Yeah, you just need art tempo. Yeah. Mm. Aggro with blue cards. That's mm-hmm. that's actually what tempo is. Yep. Yeah. Aggro with spell pierce. <laughs> <laughs> Checks out. Yeah. <laughs> so mono blue tempo and standard, I don't understand why. People don't play it. And I was asking the wrong question. The re- the real question is people, you know, yeah, why don't they understand tempo? Right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> or the answer is, well, because yeah, people don't understand tempo. They can't play mono blue tempo because no one knows what tempo is. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I really derailed us here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what other questions we got on this list? Well, um, well, let me ask you this. Let's say uh, I'm playing perfectly like I always do. And okay. I just, I'm losing all these fantastic matchups and I'm getting really tilted. And I just have this problem where I'm just getting tilted all the time in these big tournaments. Can you tell me how am I not supposed to get tilted when these hap- these horrible luck things always happen to me? I just have such bad luck, Cam. How you, do I not get tilted? You know, I don't know. <laughs> By a level. <laughs> I... 
<laughs> you could probably, I don't know, just take a, take a breather. Check your chair. Check your chair. Call a judge. Is your chair even? Go to the washroom. Have you tried restarting? <laughs> These are all questions. <laughs> nah. But like, if you're trying to not get tilted at magic, like, why not ask why you're tilted? Like, there are... So, for the people... Again, I don't want to generalize too much, but it seems like the type of people you see getting tilted at magic aren't doing it when there is anything really substantial on the line. Like, sure, if you if something if you get really unlucky to lose like ten grand in the finals of a GP, sure, you miss your third land four turns. Whatever. You can be t- you can be tilted, <laughs> but because you're asking yourself like, why am I upset about this match in particular? And there you have a valid answer, but a lot of the times it's just I don't know. I'm kind of annoyed. I wanted to have fun. This isn't as fun as I wanted. Right. Like I got variance. It's yeah. like you have to accept. So then if that's the question, okay, variance. Well, we know this is part of the game. So why do you care? Why are you getting mad at part of the game? Yeah. So, so well, that's a signed, fruit. Well, we all signed You're just tilting it. at windmills. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Well said. I like that. Yeah. yeah it's tilting Don Quixote. Yeah. You're just yeah. getting <laughs> mad at something you can't. There's nothing you can do here. It's yeah. fine. Mm-hmm. So I think that's one of the major things. Like, yeah, why are you tilted? That's the real question. Yeah. People are like, how do I not tilt? Well, why are you getting tilted? I get it sometimes because, like, everyone gets tilted. Sometimes <laughs> the game is incredibly triggering. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you mess a trigger, triggered. <laughs> <laughs> Opponent draws runner, runner, triggered. But a lot of the times, yeah, like, that's the easiest way to detilt is just realize that there's nothing really to be tilted over. Yeah, because you just get like worked up, and you're just busy being mad. <laughs> and if that's all you're thinking about, then like you're gonna do it quite well. <laughs> but it's it's the wrong question. What did they do that made you so angry? Well, why are you angry? <laughs> <laughs> why you have to be mad? <laughs> yeah, because you know you you would think the question is, well, my opponent was so bad and I was so mad about it. You know, like that's why I'm yeah. mad. But like, then you counter that. Like, well, does just because they were bad mean you deserve to win? Right. You just deserve. That's to win. the first step to cheating, dude. That's the dark side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this goes. That's a dark slippery path. slope. Yeah, dude. But yeah, that's the dark side of the forest. Yeah. There's very few times. If you like, maybe your opponent's only out is a really efficient spell, and right. they and they draw. They don't have any cards in hand. They draw. Then they start like shiftily looking around. They look at you. They ask to look at your graveyard. Then they look at your graveyard or their own graveyard. And you know they drew a Snapcaster. You could be tilted then. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a guy who plays here locally. I don't see him much. He's an older guy. And one time I won a die roll against him. I'll never ever ever <laughs> forget this. And I won the die roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't <know. laughs> Ryan still laughs about this too. He still brings it up. This was a while ago. Okay. And he shows me a piece of paper with um the the ticks on them. What is it? How did that what's that like tally marks? Count? Yeah, tally marks of fives, right? Yeah. And he's got like I don't know, like 74 tally marks, you know, on this page where it like it's on a life pad. Yeah. And he goes, See, I only won 15 of these and I've lost 75 of like these die rolls, you know? I don't get it. Like, I just don't get, you know, it's insane. It's actually insane. I just lose all my die rolls. And he's just tilting off the face of the earth. And I'm like, woof. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and I just wanted to explain to him, like, you know, the variance in, yeah. uh, in the universe. It kind but of like, balances. It's, you know, I, <laughs> it's I not even, out to get you. Yeah. Like that, I, that's it like was a, crazy. I was like, and he was like dead set. No, I'm unlucky. And I was like, uh, that doesn't exist. No, that's, act- well, so. Whether you like the probably arguments probably that it doesn't exist, but that's actually a much more rational and like scientific and reasonable way to go about perceived variance than anybody else who gets tilted. Because that's how you notice like discrepancies. You measure them a bunch and like, oh look. <laughs> sample size is too small. But 90 die rolls is not that's, a realistic yeah, sample, sample size. Sample size is way sure. too small. I'm not saying I remember it's correct, that from stats. But go. I'm saying it's a start. Like <laughs> yeah, it's a start to realizing that you're it was the that opp- you're insane. It was the opposite of the gambler's <laughs> fallacy. He noticed a deviance and he measured it, and the measurements reflected the same thing that he was noticing. And so now, you know, odds he accurately wrote down when he won die roll. I mean, and wasn't just like low. hell yeah, I won a die roll and started. <laughs> 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 anyway, that story wild. Yeah, and my point is, is this just this? It's this concern with just the wrong thing. Like all these 
all these topics today, right? It's not just wrong question, whatever. It's just being concerned about the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. You're worried about something that you don't have any power over and doesn't matter. And you're not being concerned about the things you can affect. This is all what this sort of relates to, right? Like, you know, what is the win percentage? Well, that's just the win percentage of the deck. I don't have yeah. to take any responsibility for what happened here. Mm-hmm. Right? Match I don't have to. Eddie, Eddie 20 against me. There's nothing yeah, I could have done. Nothing I could have done. Yeah. Nothing I could have done differently. Just had to <laughs> drool. And like probably the biggest detriment of asking any of these questions is that any answer that you come up with, any solution you try and uh, implement to this wrong question because you're looking at the wrong thing, won't fix the issue. Exactly, right. Because what? how am I fix this Snapcaster made? This is... How do, I drew a Snapcaster, yeah. and I have to look at my graveyard now. Now, I have to. You know what I mean? I didn't I didn't do anything wrong leading up to this. I just... Now I got to fix this situation, which variants put me in. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't take responsibility for the actions you've done up until that point. And, like, these are probably where you hear the anecdotes of, I don't know, man, I just don't get it. Like, I've been trying all these things. I just can't win anymore. I don't understand this game. I can't improve. I can't... Whatever. Like, this is where all the energy of people spinning their wheels goes. Yeah, or to these questions and these thoughts and these ideas that you have no power over. Like, all this comes down to shuffle off those things that you can't yeah if you've tried to can't control if you've tried a bunch of different iterations and variations of a solution to something maybe you're just not looking at the right question yeah so you can't control the random turn you drew a snapcaster mage i don't know why you're trying to fight this because that's what he's doing he's trying to fight the fact he drew a snapcaster mage because he wasn't prepared because he wasn't doing the right thing yeah you're trying to you know justify just not trying in matchups that are bad win percentages you know trying to explain why it's okay to tilt off. like You know, all these things. Like, you you have control over what happens in the game state other than the decisions you made. If you want to tilt it yourself for being like, yeah, like, I screwed up. But who really tilts about that? I screwed up, and then you're like, I'm never going to let that happen again. Yeah. I've done it. Remember when I did it with the Shipbreaker Kraken? Screwed myself out of a top eight. I forgot it bounced four thing or tap four things, and I only tap three thinking, and then I went I think, to time. I vaguely remember. Yeah, that. yeah. Never. I'll never forget now what that card does. <laughs> and I'll never <laughs> ever in a situation like that again not pause and be like, wait. But it's not your fault though. Rating's impossible. <laughs> it all comes <laughs> like, back. I'm to that, tilted man. about it, but not really because at the same time it's like it hurts. Yeah. You know, I'm like I should have top eight that GP, and I'm literally it's 100 percent my fault I didn't. Like actually, I'm just 100 percent my fault. There's no. Like, I'm I screwed up. And, yeah, that hurts. But at the same time, I'm not tilted about it because I'm like, well, I was like, it was my second GP. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it was my second GP. Like, that's fine. And I'm learning. And I learned from it. It made me a better player. So that's okay. Yeah. And so all the only question is like, okay, well, what can I do to get, you know, so that doesn't happen again. And if you can't do anything, then, okay. You can't do anything when you draw a Snapcaster and you haven't looked at your graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you can do? You can concede and not play Snapcaster decks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like yeah. the tilt thing, right? It's like, yeah, I don't know. Like, You get upset that you screwed up, but you can't, I think it's hard to justify getting mad at anything else because yeah. why you tilted, you can't control that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well said. All right. Any blowouts this week? Mm, having to read Reddit. Yeah, because Cam brought this up. <laughs> all, all, blow up for us and all spikes. our listeners. We apologize for having yeah. to, to talk about that. Yeah, fun conversation though. Mm. Interesting in the way. Yeah, that. Yeah, whenever you're stuck, I like that. That you like this idea about being stuck in a rut. That you're spinning your wheels and like you start using energy and and thinking about all these wrong questions. You know, mm-hmm. you begin to think about them and frame them, and it. Yeah, the minute you're spinning your wheels, it's probably what you're doing. If you're not improving, you're probably doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Strong yeah. point. All Just right. another great one. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining the club this week. Make sure, as always, you check out wizardtower.com for all your magic single needs. If you want to support the DWC podcast, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash DWC podcast. You get some sweet bonus content. We uh, record all of our pre-show chit-chat before every episode now and post it for our patrons can listen to us just talk shit spin our wheels while we try and figure out something <laughs> to talk about on the yeah, episode plan our episode and sometimes there's yeah. a lot of examples and sort of ideas and arguments that are actually in there that don't make it into the show yeah so yeah pretty sweet speaking and, of other patron bonuses 
the tokens we've been alluding to over the last few episodes. The art's done. Oh, we've got yeah. them ordered. They're done. Yeah, we sent the invoice. We paid for them, and they're on the way. Yeah. They look awesome. They do I did awesome. not think they would that look that sweet, dude. Yeah. They look incredible. I sent it to a, no, like a muggle friend. <laughs> and she was like, wow, these look amazing. She's yeah. like, these are so cool. I was like, oh, thanks. Yeah. Sweet. Shout out to Inkland Customs for the sweet tokens. We can't wait to get them. They're going to be great. So yeah, those are another patron bonus. Yeah. Um, they will be sent out soon. And also, being a patron gets access to the DWC Discord. Yeah, cool community of people. Yeah, it's great. Uh, also, stay tuned next week for our announcement of our Christmas giveaway. Yeah, it's coming. We're going to decide what we're giving away. Yeah. But... We haven't decided yet. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas presents. Yeah. 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 No and one's done that before. <laughs> beyond that, you can also find us on Twitter at DWC Podcast One and on Facebook, the Disorganized Wizard Club Podcast. And however you listen to the show, whether it's on Podbean, iTunes, any podcast app, now. We are on Google Play as well. You can find us there. Shout outs, by the way, for getting us on there to one of our patrons who mentioned yeah. that we should be on there and yeah. appreciate it. It was Thanks. like the easiest thing in the world, too. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. never thought about it before. We're just, we're yeah, just disorganized. We're also on Google Play <laughs> now, so you can find us there. Uh, but yeah, uh, check it out. Rate the podcast if you want. Share it with your friends. Everything helps this thing keep growing and bring it to new listeners. We appreciate you all for listening. We'll catch you all next week. 